Work starts in the afternoon today. We have time in the morning, so we take a walk around town. You've been sticking pretty close to me today. But that's only us. Yeah, I'm not so sure about except that you've got uh, hemorrhoids? What? Is that what you want? Chinami nods. She holds my arm tightly. Much more appropriate compared to naked aprons. Uh, Chinami, where do you want to go? A love hotel, for example? Somewhere where we can just chat? I wonder which underworld is best. Have you been to the music box shop? Yeah, they sell Kaleido orgels. Did you see any Kaleido orgels? Chinami shakes her head. It's combined with the kaleidoscope. Yeah, when you are listening to the music. Chinami grabs onto me tightly again. I guess it's settled then. The light-hearted chats can come later. You don't have to be lovers to do it right, there's nothing wrong with doing it as a family. Ichinami suddenly looks up into the sky. Rain? Just as I come to that conclusion, a drop of water also hits my cheeks. The sky is still clear, but there are some dense looking clouds overhead. Seems like you're right. She is downhearted, unlike her usual self. I flick her on the forehead. It's probably just a quick shower, it'll stop in no time. I don't want to get wet, so why don't we hurry to the music box shop? She grabs onto my hand even tighter. We can't walk fast this close to each other, can we? We hurry on with our arms linked, as if you were in a three-legged race. We weren't any slower than normal. People probably thought we were a bunch of idiots. How has it come to this? I'm more amazed at Chinami's audacity to continue running. There's no doubt that we are lovebirds. We rush into the store before it starts raining hard. Chinami, aren't you cold? Only her hair and shoulder area are wet. Here, it's a handkerchief. Yeah, you didn't bring one, did you? If I'm going to call myself a boyfriend, this is a no-brainer. Chinami shoves the handkerchief back. This maturity is so unchinami like She's thinking the same as me. I don't know whether I should be happy or feel embarrassed. But I don't want you to catch a cold either. Idiot, I never said anything like that. I didn't mean it in that way. Chinami, stay still. I wipe her down before she reacts. I dry myself after I'm done with her. <laughs> She's laughing. I avoid eye contact. Anyway, didn't we come here to look at the music boxes? I pull Chinami along to the place that caught my interest. I pick it up and pass it to her. She looks up at me after taking it gently with both hands. After I give a nod, she looks inside. Just like Mare when she immerses herself. Jinami also looks at it intently. A flutter of lights, a dance of colors. They transform into different shapes and sizes. 
You can confirm them with your bare eyes, yet they're definitely being projected into your eyes. No less stunning than Hibarigasaki's starry sky. Jinami stays in the shop until she's satisfied. We take a look outside, wondering if the rain has stopped yet. <coughs> the sky after the rain. Light seeps through the clouds as they start changing color. Jinami sighs in wonder as she gazes up. Not only did we see the Kaleido Orgel, we get to witness the spectacle too. <coughs> Pursuing the light, she might even encounter an alien or two along the way. As her brother and her boyfriend watching over her isn't a bad feeling at all. It was noon when we arrived home. We head for the dining room for lunch. And as previously agreed, I leave the cooking to Chinami. That again! <laughs> In the same situation as this morning, I'm at my wit's end. At least on Chino is still asleep. Well, you see. Whether it's her cooking or her outfit, I want both to stop. Why would you want the outfit to stop? However, if I reject her goodwill, will she start hating herself again? I can't let that happen. I'm serious about building up what's important to us. That's why I should accept her goodwill, even if it's poorly expressed. I should find a way out of this. Echinami. Yo. Maybe not the cooking after all. I don't want you getting hurt. Is this going to be another sex scene? If so, then I'll have to cut here. I'll see you in a second. Kinode, せいとに比べれば少ないもんさ。部活に精を出す生徒もいるようですが。そうだな。おかげで子供らに正体がバレそうになった。ためにね。くすくす。だからそれやめろ。というか、なんでお前姿見せてるんだ?おかしいでしょ
何すねてんだすすねてませんま姿を出してたいなら止めないがあ頭撫でないでください代わりにこっちを撫でてもいいけどなペンダントの方ですか何すねてんだすすねてませんこのペンダント隕石は俺の家に代々伝わっていた家宝みたいなものだたまに磨いてやらないとな意地悪ってそういう意味で言ったじゃないほらあ頭撫でないでくださいこれは江戸時代の中期農民だった俺の祖先が空から田んぼに落ちてきたのを見つけて拾ったらしい当時のことはお前は覚えてないんだろうがはい私が目覚めたのは君が家を出た後ですから俺の家族は俺が天文の道に進むのに反対していた俺は長男だからな家業の農家を継ぐのが当たり前だとみんなが思っていたおかげで俺が大学で天文学を専攻したいと話してからは親とは喧嘩が絶えなかっただから俺はバイトで貯めた金奨学金入試成績の優秀者だけに与えられる学費控除の枠それらを使って国立大学進学の切符を手に入れた親とは最後まで分かり合えなかったけどなそして俺が上京する際姉貴が隕石の一部を切り取ってペンダントを作り俺に渡したんだ寂しがり屋のあんたのことだからホームシックになるだろうだけどいじっぱりのあんたのことだから帰省したりはしないだろうだからこれを家族と思って大切にしろ俺に存在に放り投げてな姉貴らしくなく寂しそうに笑ってやがったよその後ペンダントからお前がニョキッと現れた時は心臓が止まるかと思ったかな私は君の姉と約束しましたから眠りの中で聞こえたんです君の姉がペンダントに向かってつぶやいていたんだと思います君を守ってくれって一人前になるまで見守っていてくれってその約束は俺が一人前になって成就されたわけだ一人前ではありませんそういうな今のお前には俺との約束があるあ俺はダメ人間だからなその通りですお前はダメ宇宙人だしな違います失礼です俺は人前に出るのが苦手なのに教師にまでなったからなそうまでしてあいつから霞を奪ったんだからなだから俺はダメ人間だ違います君は結局は身を引きましたあの二人を再会させたのは君なんですから彼の命があとわずかと知ってかすみさんに会わせようって決意したんですからだから私が二人の恋を引き裂いたのに最後には二人は再び恋に落ちた彼が亡くなると君はかすみさんを案じたのにかすみさんは一緒にはなれないとかたくなに拒んだ俺に愛想を尽かしたんだろうな違いますかすみさんは確かに君を愛していました私は残酷なことをしました彼の頼みとはいえ手過ぎた真似をしたんだと思います恋は出会いから始まりますからかすみさんが君と彼どちらと先に出会ったかどちらの選択肢を先に選んだかそれだけの違いでしかなかったんですかすみさんは彼と最初に出会ったから彼と恋に落ちかすみさんが彼を忘れ君のそばにいるようになると今度は君と恋に落ちていた
だから全てが終わってからかすみさんは両方の選択肢を選ばないことに決めた自分だけで子供たちを育てることに決めたそれがかすみさんの選んだ生き方だっただとしても俺は後悔してるよ女手一つで二人の子供を育てるのがどれだけ大変か知っていながら俺は手助けできなかった結果かすみはいなくなっただからだから君は私を使わせたんじゃないですか君は千波さんと同じです自分だけを責めすぎですオルゴールまで作って彼の死を悼んでかすみさんの死にも責任を感じて私を使わせて残された家族を案じていろいろとありがとうなだだから頭撫でないでくださいけど言っておくがそのカマで軽んじゃないぞこの罪は俺が背負っていくんだからなやっぱりタイガ君はドメ人間です After Mishima Taiga entered the astronomy course in the science faculty, he used his university holidays to go on trips. Summer holidays, winter holidays, and a spring holiday so long that it never crossed his mind up to that point. Taiga went to every planetarium ever built in the country. Being a financially poor student, Taiga cut down his living expenses and worked hard in his part-time jobs for that. Japan, a country with many planetariums. Taiga's hometown, a village in the north, had a beautiful starry sky. The meteorite handed down in their family for many generations is housed in their own household al altar. Taiga's fascination for the stars may have been inevitable. Even after seeing the most famous planetariums, he was uh, dissatisfied. He then arrived at Hibarigasaki's planetarium where he also met Kasumi, who was a high school at the time. When Taiga was lining up at the planetarium's ticketing office, a young girl arrived while looking lost. She asked Taiga if this was where you buy tickets. Unlike her younger sister Shino, Kasumi had a certain assertiveness about her. Lined up behind Taiga, she probably got bored and repeatedly tried to start a conversation with him. Her holiday assignment was to write a reflection essay on a film or book. Hibarigasaki doesn't have a cinema, traveling to the next town costs money. Books don't sit well with her either, so she decided to take a look at the planetarium, seeing how it was close by. And she figured she might as well write the essay on it. She kept on talking away, even though she, he wasn't listening. So they ended up having a conversation, where they told each other their names and where they lived. What's the planetarium like? she asked. Is this your first time going to one? he asked instead. Socially awkward and not good at interacting with strangers, he answered briskly. Kasumi replied yes with a smile. Despite being a local, Kasumi apparently didn't have much of an interest in the stars. Then a planetarium probably won't be very interesting to you, he ended up answering bluntly. To which she smiled and said, and true to her words, an unforgettable memory was born in Taiga's heart that instant. You could say it was love at first sight. Love that's close to envy for Kasumi, who unlike himself is able to openly smile at someone she only just met. After the screening ended, Taiga spoke to Kasumi outside the planetarium once again. Although he wouldn't stop stuttering, he wanted to know her contact details, however his lips wouldn't budge due to his nervousness. Kasumi smiled after seeing him like that. Bye-bye! 
and the two parted. He ended up without finding out her contact details, while being called a weird and interesting person. Tiger was terribly depressed. With his shoulders drooped, he went to the lookout she told him about. He thought to himself as he walked up the tall hill. He hated his social awkwardness. He resolved to cue it. Love enriches one's life like a cork moving faster from oil. That was his hastily thought up conclusion. I can't let this end here. I will see her again. She lives in Hibarigasaki. Her high school should be here too. Wait, wasn't there a school along this hill? Hibarigasaki Academy. Once she graduates from junior high, she'll attend this school, won't she? I'll be a working member of society by then. I'll become a teacher. That's right, I'll just become a teacher. If I am placed in front of a class of students, my social awkwardness will disappear in no time. Plus, I can see her again. Killing two birds with one stone. Am I a genius or what? And thus, Taiga made an oath to Hibarigasaki's starry sky when he was young. その子は霞と再会してすぐ破れたんだけどな。まさかすでに彼氏がいるとは思わなかった。俺の計画の唯一の誤算だ。5歳以前の問題だと思いますけど。ま、ここで教師をやってたから、俺は科学館の館長になれ
Wait, what? な、なんだって。この年でおばあちゃんは早い気もしますけど、今は幸せでいっぱいです。よく意味がわからないけど、教えてくれるかい。<笑>内緒です。妄想が暴走してるんじゃないかい。昔から君はそうだった。天文部の副部長をしていた彼の後を追いかけては先輩先輩って目をキラキラさせていたしねややめてください昔の話ですその彼に関してだけどマヤカが気にしていたよ先輩をですか正確にはひばり校の都市伝説男女の恋物語さ最近子供たちもよく肝試しをしていますけど君はなぜこの都市伝説がひばり校に広まっているのかその理由を知っているかい<笑>想像はつきます教えてくれるかい多分広めたのは先輩だと思いますもうすぐいなくなってしまう自分の生きていた証が欲しかったひばり校の都市伝説という形としてでも残っていて欲しかった私はそんな風に思いますそうか総一郎先輩はどう考えていたんですかその前にマヤカの意見だけどマヤカは本当は彼が君のお姉さんに自分のことを忘れてほしくなかったから都市伝説を噂してそして君のお姉さんに忘れた自分を思い出してほしかった<笑>マヤカさんらしいですねマヤカは好きな相手に忘れられたいなんて考えられないって言っていたからね次は総一郎先輩の番ですよ僕もまた彼が噂を流したと思ってるだけど理由はもっと単純なんじゃないかな彼はひばりがさきの星空が好きだっただからひばり校の生徒たちに肝試しとしてでもいいから夜に校舎の屋上に登ってほしかったんだそして星空を見上げて欲しかったんだ<笑>だとしたら素敵な理由ですねロマンチックだろう本当の理由を知っている人はいるんでしょうかそれとも先輩にしかわからないんでしょうか姉さんも知らなかったんでしょうかそれは僕にもわからない今度三島先生にも聞いてみようかレンに出会うことができるなら彼女にもその二人が知らなくてももしかしたら誰かが探し当てるかもしれない知ることができるのは誰になるのかもしもその誰かがこの都市伝説を解いた時その時にはひばりがさきの星空を好きになっていたら彼も君のお姉さんももちろん僕たちも本望なんだ Yeah. We are standing in front of Hibariko school gates. We only just left the Milky Way. Aso's dad told us the repairs were complete and we could go get it. He was reluctant to fix it in the first place. That's why he might make up some excuse to avoid giving it back even when he's done. So I want you two to catch him before he runs away. That's what he told us. It's Saturday today, they, there aren't any exam preparation classes. It seems he still turned up to school. Apparently, he'll be going on holiday starting tomorrow until the opening ceremony, so he is preparing the lessons for the second semester. I see why he's running away. After he's done with his work and leaves, the next time we get to see him is a week later when school starts. I also wanted to see him as soon as possible. See him and have a talk. And hear his voice one more time. 学校にいるんだよね、タイガーさん。I don't know. He should be. I've never met my dad face to face before. This applies to Chinami as well. Perhaps we've seen our dads when we were little, but apart from photos, we haven't seen them in person after we were aware of our surroundings. However, I still vaguely remember his voice. When was this? Was I still an infant? Or was I still in my mother's belly at the time? Chinami. Me too. I'm getting nervous. My throat is dry and my palms are sweaty. I have no idea what to say to him. 
Would he recognize me as his son when he sees me? Will he react happily after knowing it's me? This anxiety doesn't go away. However, this day was coming sooner or later. Chinami is gra uh, grasping my hand. I squeeze her warm hand in response. I see a shadow. Someone's leaving the school building. The shadows look like one person, yet also looks like two people. Let's go, Chinami. We face ahead. And step forward together. Wait, that's it? Hmm, maybe them talking to Taiga will be part of the epilogue? Well, we'll see. Uh, by the way, I'll probably have to replace the normal ending song here with a different soundtrack, because the ending song always gets copyright claimed. Now, a copyright claim in itself is nothing bad, it's not like a copyright strike that can get your entire channel into trouble, but because of this new YouTube Red thing that launched in the US a few days ago, and the new rules that came with it, People in the United States can't watch videos anymore that got copyright claimed by certain companies. So if I leave the ending song in, people in the United States wouldn't be able to watch this video. That's why I'll replace it. Anyway, I'll see you at the epilogue.
Uh, Jinami is still not done. Get down already. I shout upstairs from the entrance. The new term starts today. We'll be late at this rate. Hey, that rhyme kind I think I told her during that attendance day. I saw this coming, but I wasn't expecting to uh, uh, no improvement at all from the first term. Although we are a couple now. Where did all her breakfast cooking enthusiasm during the summer holidays disappear to? Once school starts, uh, Chinami becomes her usual self, my idiot of a sister. I was hoping she'd turn over a new leaf after the long summer break, but that seems to be an unattainable dream. I leave the house with a sigh. Oh, howdy, son. Good morning. Good morning, Suzuha-chan. Right back at you. You sure took your time, Chinami? Another one of her delusions. So in the end, what became of your holiday homework? <laughs> Please take some initiative. I'm begging you already. Don't you sleep in all year round? Ejinami feigns innocence and remarks cheerfully while holding my arm. Don't stick so close. Maybe it's because of Chinami's usual behavior, but no one takes her seriously. I like how we're not getting any weird reactions. Aoi-san, we have club activities after school today. I'm reminding you before you, Jake. We will be starting from today. Hisakaki is going to attend the club meeting and get us approved. And once we become more official, we'll need a club advisor. Although it appears that it's not a compulsory. But we happen to have someone perfect for the job. Yeah, though at school we call him Mishima-san. But the Okaken is not a real club, is it? You guys are a hobby circle, so you don't need one. Who's your lover? I didn't think you would get involved in this. Yeah, that's right. She blocks Suzuha's mouth. Suzuha-chan, what about school? Chinami, are you sure you can run in this position? A carefree smile. Her smile contains a strong resemblance to mom's. She's able to lend her cheerfulness to anyone. It's like a symbol for family. Well then, that's it for Chinami's route. So uh, next time on Hoshizora no Memoria, Mare's route. Or is it? Thanks for watching everyone, and have a nice day. Bye bye!